Hello there, my friends. Welcome back to Vaults for Master. This is the eighth day, day eight of basic training. These little mini series I've put together that is covering these 16 basic actions that you could take on your turn in Pathfinder 2nd Edition Remastered Rules. Let's get down to business. Here it is. We've got the release action is number eight. And as you can see by its little pretty symbol there, the open diamond, that means it's a free action. You could do this for free. You don't have to spend any of your three actions or reaction to do this one. It also has the manipulate trait, which typically means when you take actions that have manipulate as a trait, that often triggers reactions from allies, enemies, etc. around you. However, interestingly with this one, it specifically says down here, in the bottom of the second paragraph, that unlike most manipulate actions, release does not trigger reactions that can be triggered by actions with the manipulate trait, such as reactive strike. So normally, if you take an action or do something that has manipulate as a trait, a lot of triggered reactions are keyed to that manipulate trait word, like reactive strike, and pow, the enemy would be able to hit you. However, release does not trigger those actions with the manipulate trait. Which kind of begs the question, why give it a trait at all then? I don't know. But anyway, let's see what's going on. So release says, you release something you're holding in your hand or hand. Okay. Uh, this might mean dropping an item, removing a hand from a weapon, while continuing to hold it in another hand, releasing a rope, suspending a chandelier, or, or performing a similar action. And then it goes on to say, if you want to prepare to release something outside of your turn, you use the ready activity. All right, so let's kind of uh, distill this a little bit because there's a little bit of word salad going on here. Uh, so anyway, you release something. Sounds simple enough. It doesn't cost you anything. It doesn't trigger any reactions or whatever that would be triggered by manipulate. Uh, and if you do want to prepare to release something outside of your turn, so let's say, oh, when the enemy runs to the door, I'm going to release the, the cable I'm holding that has the, the bucket of acid in it or whatever. I don't know. That would be part of a ready activity. Okay, sounds good. Now, the one thing about this that, there's a couple things about this that I popped out to me, is this could be one one way in which you could attack without spending your actions uh because in the example given for instance releasing the rope suspending the chandelier and that's kind of what my my graphic here is demonstrating let's say you've set up some sort of trap uh and you're holding the rope that will release whatever or you've cut something and you're holding it until it's the timing is right to release it uh, you know, causing something to fall onto somebody or somebody to fall or whatever the case is, which would do damage, let's say. That could be a way to kind of get around action economy. So, for instance, if I'm holding this this uh, bucket of acid in my example and the enemy comes through the door, I release it, that's free, right? I'm going to do damage. I still have my three actions. So, let's say I release Maybe I'm holding it with one hand and then I throw something with another hand or I can move, I can attack, whatever, right? I think that's maybe a, a cool setup that you could do if you knew an enemy was coming or something to that effect or you were setting up some sort of trap, you know. And you can kind of see where that would then also maybe lead to allies having those readied actions where when you release something with your free action, they're going to attack. So I kind of like this in a more complicated scenario like that. Uh, you know, aside from just sort of, oh, I'm gonna release something, right? You can actually see this being as a big setup for lots of other stuff. Uh, then the other thing that popped out to me is just that concept of, you know, you're dropping items. And this goes back to one of the other actions, interactions I've talked about, the interact, uh, what was that? Re uh, sorry, interact is a manipulate, so it's an action activity. Uh, I hit that a little bit when I was talking about it back then, but this comes up here in the adjudication portion of this conversation. So back when I was talking about interact, I uh, got into drawing and st uh, drawing and stowing items, which is in the player core, 267, 268. And one of the things I kind of glossed over when I was talking about the interact action was the changing grip. 
uh, by, you know, if you got a, let's say a two-handed weapon, you've only got one hand holding it, changing your grip to two hands would be, because it specifically says adding a hand to an item, that takes an interact action. So that's going to cost you one of yours. But then it goes on to say here on page 417 of the player core that if you just release your grip and go down to one hand on a two-handed uh, item, that is a free action. So that kind of implies that there are a lot of one hand, two hand grip situations that are going to become important uh, in the game as you probably get higher level, that sort of thing, depending on what weapons. And then I saw here in the GM core on, in the treasure trove section on page 222, and they get into the magic items, that sort of thing. And there's a little section here about held items. If a character must wield the item to use it, this entry in the item stat block lists the word held along with the number of hands the character must use when wielding the item, such as held in one hand. And then the rules that they're talking about are what you see over here on page 267. So there is a lot of scenarios from what I'm gathering here where releasing for free is going to become important because the number of hands on an item and changing your grip is a big deal right you're gonna have magic items with two hands or one hand you're gonna have weapons with two hands or one hand so there's a lot of hidden changing grips i think that maybe a new player or a new gm like myself is going to need to come to grips with <laughs> that's a good one all right uh so that is something i started thinking about huh how how prevalent is this so i dug a little bit deeper and let's get a grip on this, right? And a little joke for a little pun here. Page 287, player core, hands again. Uh, and this is in the, the equipment section, the item section, your gear, your armor, your weapons, that sort of stuff. Uh, and I've got a couple examples here where this is going to become important, become relevant. So the list that you see here is how many hands. So if you are having a weapon, one of the stats you need to concern yourself with is the number of hands a weapon requires or could use also in the weapon traits as well uh, this lists how many hands it takes to use the item effectively so you'll notice in the hands section and i've got simple weapons up here in the upper table and martial melee weapons down here in the lower table and the number of hands that's that uh, fifth column over you see some weapons like the long spear take two hands some weapons like a staff take one hand Bastard Sword, one hand, Bow Staff, two hands. I kind of highlight those four weapons for you because there's a little bit more to it, uh, as you'll see in a second. So most items that require two hands can be carried in, in one hand. So if you go back to uh, retrieving stowed items, so if you want to grab a weapon with one of your hands, that takes an interact action. That takes one of your actions. So you haven't struck with it yet. You're simply pulling it out. Now, where... I think you might be able to get away with something because then it says change your grip takes another action. So if you're going to spend an action to interact and draw one of these weapons or pull one of these weapons free, one of these two-hand weapons, let's say, let's say you have a long spear and it's on your back or something. I don't know. Interact to grab it is one action, right? interact to grab it with two hands is two actions and then you strike with your third action so you could literally use your entire turn to make one strike however nothing says specifically from what i can see that um, if a character must wield the item to use it this entry in the item stat block held along with the number of hands a character must use when they're wielding it so to wield it you do need two hands but it doesn't say anywhere that you can only use one hand to retrieve your weapon in the first place. So I think my instinct tells me that you could, most items that require two hands can be carried in one hand, but you must spend an interact action to change your grip in order to use it. So I don't think it says anywhere that you specifically can only use a hand to retrieve. So if I have a weapon that I have two hands to use, I'm thinking it's perfectly legal to use two hands in order to interact to grab the weapon in the first place, thereby allowing you to strike immediately with your next action. 
I don't think you only have to use one hand, right? I mean, tell me if I'm wrong in the comments. By the way, like and subscribe while you're down there. So that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that, you know, the interact action only says that you have to spend that extra action to retrieve the item or change your grip on it, right? But I don't think you need to spend two actions just to grab a two-handed weapon. I think you spend one action to use both hands. That's how I would rule it as a GM. So that's just something to consider that if you're a player specifically, right, and you're grabbing, you only have one free hand, well then, yeah, you, you know, you have to grab it with that one hand. But if you got two free hands, you could grab your two-hand weapon with one action, I think. Uh, then the other thing to consider is that some of these weapons, for instance, the staff here, uh, it says, you know, it's a one-handed weapon, and it does a D4 of bludgeoning. But over here in its weapon traits, Monk, two-hand D8. So what that means is if you're wielding it with two hands, it actually does a D8's worth of damage, which is obviously better than the D4. So in a scenario like this, if you had one hand on the weapon, you could swing and do a D4 damage. But if you put two hands, you could swing with both hands and get a D8. So there's an example of where, hey, if I have to make an attack and my staff is lying on the ground or whatever, I would use two hands to pick it up and immediately have it equipped with two hands and then wham and get my two hand damage with my strikes. I wouldn't spend just one action to pick it up and then two action to grab it with two hands and then whack. That wouldn't make any sense. Uh, so be aware of that. There are some weapons that you can wield with one or two hands. Uh, and, you know, which whichever hands you're going to use, you know, you have to decide that as you're grabbing the weapon. Uh, the other thing that might change your mind is if you're wielding something in the other hand. Like, let's say you've got a shield in your other hand, you've got a magic item, a potion, or whatever. That obviously is going to take a free hand to use. So that's where, you know, the part about the treasure trove and looking at the items, how many hands does it take to use, that's something else to consider. So if you add it all up, you know, we have an example of a simple you know free action here release you you know drop something you release your grip on something whatever it is but there's more complexity once you kind of put it together with the rest of the actual game like the interact uh action the how many hands it takes to hold something whether it's a weapon it's a magic item whatever that grip the one hand two hand grip so players gms are gonna have to be aware how many hands does it take to wield your weapon so if it's a two-hand weapon like the long spear or the bow staff, you need to have two hands on it to wield it correctly. There is no one-handed wielding from what I see, the long spear or the bow staff. So no, they can't do that. However, there are some weapons like bastard sword and the staff where you can wield it with one or two hands, depending on your circumstances. And I think the number of hands you put on the thing when you first grab it is your choice as long as you have a free two free hands to grab something you could just spend one action to grab it with both hands i don't see why not all right anyway that is my take on this uh this free action release hopefully there was some interesting information there for you something useful and again like subscribe comment below if you have different take on this on this action than i do that i've shared with you and uh, hopefully you'll take a look at the rest of the series and then i've got some more of these uh coming up i think there are a total of 16 so believe it or not, I, I'm only like halfway through these. I feel like I've been doing these forever, but I'm only halfway. OMG. All right. Have a good day. See you later.